Awesome. So this is the Hugo mini course. This is kind of uh, the agenda that we've been covering so far. So we've done four of these so far. So we, we kind of went over an overview of the folder structure and how a basic Hugo project is out of the box. We did a templating section. Uh, actually, we did two of those. Talked about how the theme inheriting system works in Hugo. So if you're interested in that, check back at some of the old videos. We did an initial dive into some of the styling last month. I didn't get nearly as far as I wanted to get on that. So we're actually going and extending that a little bit today. And we're going to do another section on adding style to your Hugo website. And then next month, we're going to take a little bit of a break from these mini courses. So we're doing a, a combination meetup with JS Boston. So we're going to have a couple different speakers there uh, in, in collaboration with each other and do some kind of cross pollination between our groups. So we're going to not do a Hugo mini course next month. Uh, but the month after that, we'll hop into components. That may be something that we break into two different sections, still to be determined. And then December, we're on the fence if we're going to do a meetup. I feel like that's in holiday season there, so we might push that to January. But I'm going to hop into my stuff now and hop into where we left off last time. So what I'm doing basically is I'm in a standard... Hugo file structure. And can folks see this for the most part? Does this need to be larger? Is this okay? It's okay? Okay. People think it's good. Um, so this is a basic Hugo project. It doesn't look like too much. I'll grab this URL and show you exactly what we're working with. Actually, I'm just going to open this up in Firefox. So this is our site. It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit ugly. Um, it's probably not going to look too much better. It's more about going over the fundamentals than it is about actually making this look good at this time. So uh, what we did last month is we came in here and we added a little bit of style with these individual CSS files. And we used this concept called Hugo pipes, which is essentially a, an asset pipeline that brings all these styles in together, puts them into one file, minifies them by taking out all the white space and condensing them and basically adds a fingerprint, which is a way to have your browser uh, cache them in a more smart way. So basically feed a cached version of the asset if it's already been accessed and not changed, but if you change it, then you get the new styles until those things get applied. So we have these components here and we have this main CSS file. I'm just gonna go in here and I wanna just demonstrate a couple of different things we can do with these. So I want to actually come in here and grab some CSS variables. So have folks here used CSS variables before? Has anyone not ever used these before? Okay. Seems like people have done this. So this is something you can do with standard CSS. You might want to check on like Mozilla's website to, to make sure you understand the, the browser support here, but essentially without a preprocessor, you can use these general variables in your style and you can come in and you can actually start using these like, um, it, it right in line with, uh, your uh, style code. So the way you would access this is you do var and you say color, you pick one of your colors here. I have a color primary. Um, and if I save that, so essentially we decide, we, we scoped this variable to the whole project and we named it color primary and we sent it a color. And then we can use that throughout the project. I'm just using it in the same file here. And if we go back to our section, you can see that that color has now been applied to that, um, that body space right now. And you can actually use these, uh, these variables throughout your project without having to put a lot of thought into it. So if I were to use this in another file, I don't have to actually come in here and import any of these different files. I can really just kind of put them together and they get um, aggregated in by the Hugo pipeline and these variables just work throughout the whole project. So let's just come in here and do another example. So let's do bar color secondary. Save that. Actually, that's gonna look bad. And I also misspelled those. Let's do lightest, which is just a white, should be just a white color. Okay. So you can see that's kind of propagating throughout there. And I just wanna do one quick thing here. Uh, I don't like how this section here like kind of spills outside of the container. I like the concept of a container. So I'm just going to add a little bit of markup to our default uh, template here. So this base of, this is where 
all the HTML wrapper is being added to uh, the, the content. I'm just going to wrap our main block content here in a quick container. So I'm going to add a div. I'm going to add a Bulma class called container. And Bulma is just a CSS framework that we imported into our project. If you want to see where we did that, we did it over here in the head. So we called this CDN here for Bulma. And if I add that, it should pop this over. And now we have things in that nice container. Okay, so now we're working with a, a general website that has some style in there. You can see where the, st the custom styles are coming from. Everything is being added right here in this style section. We're using this resource get command to find the file. And then that turns it into a resource that we can then do stuff with. And by default, Hugo looks for resources in this assets folder. You can change that location by updating your configuration file. So if you were to come down here and edit your config.yaml file, you could point that somewhere else. But by default, it's looking in that assets folder. So we're grabbing that style. We're grabbing, we're reading the directory for all the components that exist inside of this components uh, folder here within the CSS folder. And then we're looping through those and we're getting resources from each of those as well. And then we're basically concatenating those into one single file. And one of the things that you'll notice the, by the way we're doing it right now is it's, it's kind of funny. So if I look at the element on the page and I go to the network tab and I, can you guys see this? If I, yeah, I can zoom in a little bit. So you see that it's this test.min file and it has this long kind of hash appended to the end of it. So that's our fingerprinting here. But you notice that the file name is kind of funny. So the file name is test. And if you look in here, the reason that is, is because the way we're doing this right now is we're, we're renaming the file with the name of the current component. So this test.css, for instance, is the last component in this folder. And if I were to add another component here, let's just call it zz, and it's .css. And let's just add a couple of styles. Let's say, let's make all the links color red, add an important tag just to make sure it actually applies. Save that, reload this. Okay, so you can see that our links turned red. Not only that, but our, our file over here turned to zzz.min. So we're just getting the, the last file there. That might not be what you want for consistency. So there's a way that we can get around that. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna go back into our main HTML file there, and I'm going to update that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do kind of similar to what I did up here where I did a concatenate and I renamed it. I'm going to do that with our style again here, but I'm going to name it all.css. And I'm gonna to have to make sure that I do the correct slice syntax there. And if I reload that, okay. So now you can see that this is being produced as all dot, dot min dot this hash. And if we were to change, this hash will only be updated if we were to change any of the actual styles within those files. So we could run this a bunch of different times, we could deploy it, but if we were to actually change any of these styles in any of the components or the main CSS, you'll get a new hash and it will be cacheable as well. Does that make sense to folks what's going on there? Are people following me generally how that's being applied? Yeah, okay, cool. So we add our template. So one thing I wanna do here is I, I really like writing in CSS. I think you can get pretty far with it. So with CSS variables and things like that, um, I also like writing straight CSS because I think sometimes when you nest a lot, you can actually have uh, CSS that's produced by your pre-compiler that is kind of really specific and hard to override. So I actually like writing CSS, but there's definitely limitations to writing in straight CSS. So for instance, you can't really do like breakpoint variables. You can do color variables, but it's very limiting. So a lot of people are gonna still use something like SCSS or SAS to, to pre-process their style code. So I just wanna show real quick how you can convert this general uh, system into a SCSS uh, system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rename all this stuff real quick. So I'm gonna rename this folder. I'm gonna move this from CSS to SCSS. And rename that. And I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna rename all the files. So main.css is going to become main.scss. The components are going to become, all become SCSS extensions. So let's do that real quick. And 
and that. Okay, so this is going to break our code because you can notice actually down here, if I were to expand that, we're getting a bunch of errors down there. That's because we're still looking for these old files here. So we actually have to come in here in our Hugo pipeline that we've created. We have to actually go in here and change these as well. So I'm gonna make sure I change the folder to SESS, make sure I change the extension, do it again. So we're reading from that directory. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make sure that when we're printing the name, to because the resource get uh, method is looking for a specific file path that it can find and we're printing that out basically right here. So I'm just gonna change that so it can actually get that resource there. I'm gonna save that. That looks like it built. Um, okay, so now we're, we're, we're pretty similar to where we were before, right? So we're, we're, everything's loading. We're getting them as, um, actually that should, should break. Let me see if I can, I think I forgot something here. Let me see if I can start this up. Interesting. I'm surprised that's not breaking because we're not actually converting this to CSS yet. Okay, so we're getting resources here, grabbing components, we're concatenating them all together as SCSS. That's funny, I would think that would break. I'm not sure why that's not broken completely, um, but you should, uh, Chris, you have an idea? What's up? Regular CSS. Good idea. Okay, let's try to break this real quick. So let's let's go into our main file. Let's convert this from these CSS styles to let's convert this to um, a uh, SCSS variables, right? So now we're using SCSS variables. Of course it's gonna break because we no longer have these regular CSS variables, but let's just change this real quick. And I'm gonna save that. And I'm also going to go into my test and I'm just gonna comment this out. So now we're using things like inline comments, which is not CSS and we're using CSS variables. I would think this would break now, although I'm surprised it seems to still keep chugging. Okay, so it is, it is broken. It compiles, the Hugo pipe compiles, but the style is gone. So what we have to do in our main file here is we actually have to add another pipe to actually convert this to CSS. So you can do a pipe character to CSS like that. If you save that, okay. So some of our styles are coming back here, but there's, a, there's an important distinction here that's happening with these styles. So one thing I wanna point out is it's, it's fine to use these CSS variables below these styles that we've created here, that, that's totally fine. We can use this, this not breaking anything. But as soon as I come into this other file over here, if I were to go to test and I were to try to use something like a CS, CSS variable here and save this, don't make a liar out of me. Okay, so that style is not coming through. You can see my editor is kind of flagging it too. So this should be a white, uh, H1 here, but it's not. And what's happening here, and I'm surprised this isn't giving me better error detection. I thought it might. Let me see if I can start it up again. Okay, so now if I stop my web server and I try to run that again, it tells me, hey, this undefined variable color lightest, it, it, you know, you can't use that. And so there's a couple different ways you could get around this, right? Your first thought might be, um, well, maybe I could, instead of actually using these, um, this get, la uh, get, um, uh, Hugo pipe, maybe I could actually come in here and I could say, well, why don't I just start importing these files here? Like I'll, I could just um, in, do a SCSS import of my components and my test component. So we have, that's importing this test component right here. If we import that into the file and then we come back here and maybe we say, instead of getting each one of these components individually, we'll just, you know, we'll get rid of all this kind of like finding the components directory and um, concatenating all those all together. And what we'll really just do is we'll come in here and we'll uh, just get the style, get rid of all this concatenation and do two CSS like this. So are folks following what I'm doing there? So we're still getting this main .scss file, right? 
and we're still converting it to regular CSS. We're still minifying it and fingerprinting it. But what we're doing now is we're importing the files directly using SCSS like this. And let's actually, before I get too, too far ahead of myself, let's see if I can actually get this working. So, no, oh, let me start this. Okay, so I started that. So you can see that it, it is working. The reason this, this title got smaller is because we're not importing one of these styles. So I think this another .scss file has the font size increase right there. So if we were to come in here to our main file, we can actually start importing all this stuff, right? So let's import all these components here. We have test, we have another, and we have ZZZZ. So if we import all these, we should be back to where we started. So we have the red links, we have the big title, but I, I have a problem with this because I don't, I personally don't like the idea of every time I have to add a new style or a new component, I actually have to come into this file and like compose that and like say, hey, we added this file, be aware of this file. So you could use something like SAS globbing, right? You could try to do something like this, but now you're, you're, you're completely outside of the, the realm of Hugo at this point. Now you're gonna have to like convert to like using like gulp or something like that to actually do some of this. I don't think, unless someone has a way that I don't know, to actually use SAS globbing with the default Hugo binary that's out of the box. So you're kind of, in my mind, you're kind of limited to adding each one of these imports individually. If someone thinks I'm wrong, you know, throw up a hand and, and tell me how I'm wrong. I'm happy to, to learn. But that's kind of a limitation I'm seeing with doing it this way. So I would prefer to go back here and actually fix my pipeline to, to work properly. So I'm getting, getting rid of the imports. That's going to get rid of all the styles, of course, um, besides the one that we have in this specific file here. But if I were to come back over to my, my head.html, I'm not sure what's happening with the mic here. Um, so if I come back here and I revert the stuff that we did previously, and I save this, so we should be getting back to this. Although, let's just restart this. Color light is okay. So we have, we're back in that, um, we're back in the section where it doesn't like this color lightest. Let's comment that out one more time and restart this. Okay, so we're back with, with our general styles here, besides that one that's kind of busted. That fix it at all? Okay, so how can we fix this? The main thing that's happening here that's kind of troublesome is the, it's the order with which that we're actually concatenating these files together. So Hugo Pipes allows you to actually put these files together in a specific order. So it's really helpful for things like JavaScript if you're building those and you need, say you wanna pull in jQuery and then you're writing some custom code that relies on jQuery after that. So you would wanna pull those things in a specific order. Similarly, you can pull these styles in a specific order. So we can simply fix this, right? So if we were to, actually, let's go back here. Let's uncomment this. So uncommenting this is gonna break it, right? Um, we can't start this, but if we were to come in here and actually change the order that we're concatenating these. So let's just, um, let's grab this component. Let's put it after the style. Let's save that. And let's try to run this again. Now it's fine. You can use that. So really your, your order matters there, right? So now we're importing that after we've defined our variables and all is good with this stuff again. Is that, is that all making sense? Okay, let me just show one last thing that might be helpful to simplify this a little bit. So previously here, we are basically using a system where we're reading the directory directly and we're getting all these components here. We can actually use something called the match to, to pull these and simplify our code a little bit here. So instead of reading this directory, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called resources match. And since we're using this resource construct, remember that looks into the assets folder automatically. So over here, we don't have to specify this assets folder anymore. It's assuming that we're in there based on the fact that we're using a Hugo pipe. And if we come in there, we can remove this assets here. It's going to look in the components. It's gonna match those. This gives us a resource object. So we no longer have to come in here and get the file name and then get the object individually each time. So we can get rid of this whole line here. And our current context, basically we're doing a loop over all the components. So our current context is now just a single dot. So instead of calling a component, we'll just call it a single dot character here. And I believe that ought to 
have us working. Okay, so this is basically the same implementation. It's a little bit uh, simpler um, if you look at the code. So just a couple different ways to do the same thing. But essentially, any way that you slice it here is we have this system now where we're able to add a bunch of different styles. We don't have to rig these up custom code every time. We can really just add a file in there and start working with them. You can modulize your, your CSS code using whatever kind of methodology you use for CSS. But I, I like to put things into components. Some people spread them into like layouts and states and all sorts of things. But this gives you a way to break your code up into a very kind of like modular fashion and then just uh, style really quickly without having to come in here messing with your, your metadata or messing with imports on your files and things like that. You can just start adding them in coding. And that's it. So is there any questions before we, we turn it over to uh, Axel on any of this? Okay, cool. Thank you.